When I travel alone, I used to go to the bathrooms to just like have some time by myself and not be overstimulated by everyone around me. And these ones are perfect for that. Like look at this just relaxing tree atmosphere. <laughs> Race ender. <laughs> Gotta get used to the heat, it is cooking. <laughs> paper workout today not trying to crush it just got off the plane haven't eaten well all day barely slept just keeping it easy and checking things out the heat is like super dry i can feel it like sucking the moisture out of my throat my mouth like i have no saliva left so note to myself for race day carry a bottle for sure I mean, I will say the sun is really nice. Like, I'm a vitamin D girly. I feel very good. It's hot. We're definitely in the desert. that it would be like no bueno to be here after dark but they've got like string lights and it looks beautiful so i would totally recommend coming for sunset and then staying a bit after too right yeah <laughs> Three. We went to bed last night at like midnight, so three hours of sleep. It feels like feels like 11 p.m. right now, right? Yeah. Anyways, too long awake. Cannot wait to sleep. Hotel bed is super comfy, so.
run course recon, apparently. So. We're gonna do a four pack. Yeah. Um, the chocolate peanut butter, um, cookie dough, pistachio. <laughs> Um, this is obviously not how I wanted this video to end, uh, but uh, basically my race recap, swim went okay, uh, and then I crashed on the bike, um, as you can see. The bike course at Arizona 70.3 is, is is pretty hectic. Um, I'll show a map. Uh, so there's lots of turns. I think it was five U-turns per lap, and it was three laps. So 15 U-turns, and then like 22 turn turns, like just left, right, whatever, per lap. So already looked like it was going to be hectic, but I looked at it on Google Maps before the race and the roads were like six lanes wide. So I was like, oh, well, there's lots of space at least to like, you know, get by people to pass, to go slow, to go fast, whatever you need to do. Um, but then on race day, I found out that they only had one lane um, open to the bikes and the others were just open to cars still. So the lanes are pretty tight. This wasn't everywhere, but on some stretches. So the stretch that I, I crashed on, it was only a single lane. And the cones that they had out separating the cars from the bikes were like in our lane. So as not to impede the cars, um, you know, cars are priority. Uh, so the cones were in our lane. So it was even less than a lane and people were passing on the left, but then also on the right. So like someone would zoom by on the left and someone would kind of come in between them. So I was just doing my best to stay as far right as possible. Um, as far right as possible, but I was still like well within the cones. Like I'm not riding off course. Like I was staying well within the cones. Uh, and then there's a sign um, that was kind of hanging over into the course. Uh, it must like it was just basically in in the road because I was like I would say half a meter within the cones, and I hit the sign uh, going 34 kilometers an hour, <laughs> uh, and it just launched me off of my bike. I blacked out. Um, the the this on my face is actually not from hitting the ground. I hit the ground on my left side, so my shoulder and my hip are very banged up. Nothing broken though, thankfully. Um, but the scrapes are from, um, I woke up and I was dragging myself across the concrete to get off the road uh, and then I blacked out again. So this is actually from myself, unfortunately. Um, it sucks cause I feel like I was like very prepared for this race. Like I've been working very hard on my swim. Uh, as some of you guys might know, I was injured for a while and I worked like super hard on taking my rehab plan seriously and being patient with it so that I'd be ready for race day. Um, finally ready, ready to go, uh, had like forgotten my pedal charger and borrowed a charger from someone. I forgot my salts. So we like went to Whole Foods and found salt and I tested out a bunch of different hats to figure out which one was best for the heat. Like I was so ready to go. Um, and after Mont Tremblant 70.3 got canceled back in June, um, I haven't gone to race to 70.3 this year yet. So I was like ready to go. Um, 
kind of just, yeah, that, that part sucks, but I just don't feel that sad because I'm okay. And it's like, I'm not even, feel like I'm not even looking for the silver lining. I just like, can't even get sad. Cause I'm like, ah, well, I'm doing great. <laughs> Relatively. I'm very sore. Tyler has to do my hair for me. Um, and I mean, everything hurts, but overall. Quick edit. Um, a few days later and I found out that I have actually separated my shoulder. So not totally fine. Uh, and I won't be able to swim for like six to eight weeks, which is really bowing me out. Um, but still could be worse. Anyways, sorry, this is kind of turning into like a long winded story, um, on what's supposed to be a travel blog until the race and the accident. We had a very good time, um, in Tempe. Uh, and I still am going to do my blog write-ups for all that. So there's a blog post on where to watch Sunrise and Sunset in Tempe, um, everywhere to eat. The food was unreal. And then just like a general post on all the things that we got to do. So obviously not how I wanted this to end. I was hoping to have like a race, proper race recap for you guys. Um, but it is what it is. I'm okay. And uh, the trip was still really good. So hope you enjoyed watching this video up until now. <laughs> Thank you.